Hey there, in this quick video, we're going to take a look at how you can add audio effects to individual audio events inside a door. In this case, I'm using Cubase. And as I click on these individual events and select them, you can see that waveform appearing down the bottom. And that's what we're going to add effects to. So it's very different to adding effects as inserts because that affects the whole audio track. In this case, we just highlight the event and we can press F7 on our computer keypad or go up to the audio window and select the direct offline processing window. I've already made a video on how you can apply audio processing to individual events that we have selected. And you can see here that the processes I've already done are things like pitch shifting, time stretching, normalizing and fading in, and of course, changing the gain. And you can see that they've only been applied to that last clip. And as I move through to these other clips, the only process that I've applied is the normalization. This method of working is great for music production, but also excellent for sound design. Now down here, I've got some vocal hits and these are all part of the lead vocals, which are all being bussed through the one main group. So if I was to process an audio insert over the top of this channel, it would affect everything on the channel. But what I wanna do is impact this section right here. So I can either select the event up in the project window or I can highlight the area I wanna impact down below in the editor. Now I'm going to select plugin and I'm going to choose a distortion plugin because I just want this one section here to be distorted. Now auto apply is ticked, which means that instantly that setting that is the default setting has already impacted my waveform. And you can see that tick right there. So if I deselect that, then I can make changes and press apply for the changes to take effect. But in the meantime, watch what happens when I start moving these parameters around. You can see that Cubase is instantly processing over the top of that audio and the waveform is being changed to represent the parameters, which is good and it's kind of dangerous as you can see here because I've straight away clipped the audio file. So you need to be very careful if you're auto applying these changes. So now it's a matter of just moving the parameters around until I get a sound that I think is really right for this one particular region. And of course it doesn't need to be right because we can go back and change it. Nothing that we do here is permanent. So that's the beauty about working with an offline processor. We get to make some changes, listen to it, preview it on its own or preview it with the track. And then of course we can choose whether we wanna make those changes permanent or just leave it in a state of flux. Once we're happy with it, we can start to move on and maybe add some other processes. So for instance, being in control of your gain is really important. So you might go to the process tab and select gain. And now I can look at that waveform. If I want, I can compare it with other waveforms or other events in that track. And I can make sure that it's sitting in the right zone. And you might do that visually, or maybe you just come up with some sort of setting that you apply over the top of every event inside that track. There's another video on the Cubase YouTube channel which deals with transposing or pitch shifting individual events to whole entire projects. And of course, direct offline processing doesn't impact your ability to go in and transpose and pitch shift events. When I was transposing just then up in the main project window, I wasn't impacting the waveform itself. So this is another really good example of how different the direct offline processing functionality is. At the moment, I'm pitch shifting and I'm changing the algorithm and it's only impacting this one individual waveform that's selected. It's worth pointing out that the changes that I'm making were still going through my signal chain, which still had some plugins inserted over the top of it. So it's always a good idea to go and disable those or bypass them if you just need to do a little bit of a check to make sure that they're sounding okay on their own before they go through the whole entire signal chain. As you can see, I can mix up plugins and of course audio processing over the top of my selected event. And you can even use third party plugins. And of course you can take advantage of the engineer's presets inside the direct offline processing window. Now that you know how to process audio and add plugins inside the direct offline processing window, take some time to check out the video on direct offline processing and make sure you subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this. I'm gonna see you there.